that were part of the moratorium are grandfathered in. That means that they can stay in their current location and do not need to meet the buffering requirements that are in the licensing. They will be required to have a license. All medical marijuana dispensaries or cultivation centers will be required to have licenses. Um, you can be a dispensary, you can be a cultivation center, or you can be a dispensary and a cultivation center. Um, the only places that you can locate are in F1, H, and I, which we just talked about that are on the map. If you are a new operation, we put in the federal guidelines that require for doubling of sentencing if you uh, create a drug violation, and that's a thousand feet from a school, church, daycare center, drug rehab, community center. That's a standard that many um, uh, of the pe people that are writing the ordinance have put in. Mm -hmm. Is that a requirement? No. Can, right. they, it, can that be changed? Yes. So it, it is a standard that we have put into this ordinance. And so actually, any, did you also say the, the licensed daycare was one that we added because neighbors had said, are you doing anything with daycares beyond playgrounds and schools? Well, the licensed daycare that was interpreted by the city attorney is not somebody who has daycare in their neighborhood, but is an actual large licensed daycare facility. So just so you understand, there is a difference. If I'm doing it and I'm next to a place and I've got my house and I'm a licensed daycare, that doesn't qualify. It was a, a regular facility where you are not a resident of. Um, you have to be a thousand feet between uh, as a buffer for those. You also have a thousand feet between um, another dispensary or a cultivation center. Now these are new places. These are new. Um, when you apply, you apply through the city clerk for a license. Those that are currently in business have 10 days after the passage of the ordinance to apply. Those that want to open um, a location have um, 30 days after before they want to start their operation. So if I'm going to want to start something in 30 days, I have to make sure within that 30 days I apply. On the application, you have to, if you own the property, indicate you own it. If you don't own it, you have to have permission from the property owner that they know that you're going to be using it for medical marijuana. You also have to list all of the stakeholders in your company. You can be a sole pr proprietor. You can be a limited liability corporation. You can be a corporation or you can be a nonprofit. You have to list those. There will be background checks that will be done for uh, those that um, are on that list. You cannot have a felony record, uh, been convicted of a felony of drug uh, with drugs in the last seven years. What it means is if I was convicted and spent seven years in jail, when I got out on the eighth year, I could apply for, for, for this, so just so that you know that. There is and, a and we have to clarify with that on the state regulations and what we're able to do with that. We didn't have to even put that component in because it's not clarified within the um, state guidelines. If I'm a caregiver, I can't have been convicted of a felony record of drugs. We put this in, and then there was an arbitrary decision of how many years. There are some ordinances out there that it doesn't matter if you were ever convicted, you know, yep. and that's Ann Arbor. They yep. have if you were ever convicted of a drug um, violation, if you're going to be a dispensary owner. Now, as a caregiver, as a caregiver, that's 10 years with the state, uh, right. with the state. But if you're going into commercial business in Ann Arbor, there's this ever. And, and Wes had a question on if any of them currently have them that are in operation now. Um, we haven't done any of those checks yet. I, I know of some that are, and they would have to, in order to get the license, have to clear that component of the ordinance. Correct. Then you, they are going to be required to um, have a million dollar insurance policy 
on, on their place. They will also then be checked by code compliance, zoning, fire, and police um, to make sure that they uh, are up to uh, code with all of those codes. Um, they will be required to have a safe on premise to lock up their, um, their medical marijuana, however they're distributing it in money, at the end of each day. Um, if you are growing in that facility, you have to have your medical marijuana in a locked and closed facility. By the state statute, um, it's supposed to be that only a caregiver can have so many plants, and so you can't just say, I'm going to open this entire section up and every <coughs> caregiver, they're going to have to follow the state mm -hmm. requirements, which is a caregiver can have up to 60 uh, plants, unless they're a patient, if they're a patient as well, they can have up to 72 plants. So that will be in a locked enclosure um, that they'll be able um, to have, that they'll have. Can I add something right there real quick? One of the reasons that there was a lot of discussion on the cultivation plus dispensary because for me, I, I want you to know very quickly, I was very concerned with the transporting um, of the particular product or the medicine was the previously we had said, well, it can only be a dispensary. So then that means that if they have clones or seedlings, small plants that they're going to give to someone else after teaching them how to grow it, they would then not be able to have those on site. They'd have to have or have someone bring that in. Then they'd have to have someone else transport in the other part of the product. And so then you've got to only deliver, what is it? Two, You're how only much do you have on as, you? As 15 a, ounces? As a patient to have 2.5 um, ounces on you. As a caregiver, you can have up to 15. If you're a patient, you can have 17.5. Okay, so with that, we would have had delivery services, and they could only take that amount with them. So then they would be delivering, come give you some, I'll be right back. I'm going back to the place, I'm going to give you some, and I just said, oh my God, that for me was frightening, because that transportation component and delivery, I think you're going to create a whole nother industry and another difficulty that I really did not want to see. Others don't agree with that, and I'm okay, but that was my concern. So if you want to know or you heard any parts of the discussion of me pushing for, I want them in one place, because that, that was, absolutely, because I'm very concerned that then you're going to transport them. Really quick what? question, is there any punitive... Uh a section in there, so if somebody's <coughs> wise in an application? Yes, we'll get mm -hmm. to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and just the one thing, I don't know if, how many of you read the city pulps or not, but if you look on the, um, the article that was done on medical marijuana, um, there's a section that goes to um, another page on there. If you look at just below that section, you'll see that there's already a group that is um, delivering 24 hours a day medical marijuana. So I just want you to understand that. Um, then part of your application, you also are required to have security cameras. The security cameras, you are required to, on off-premise, store um, those uh, tapes from a security um, camera and that is for two weeks. You're, you're supposed to, you're required to have those stored uh, for two weeks. Um, if any of those things that I talked about during the application, you do not meet those, then the application is denied. Um, you then can come back and reapply. It's not that you're denied and you can never come back, you can come back and reapply. Okay, um, it also, if you change, if I have a new employee that comes in or a new shareholder that comes in or any of those things, you're required within um, 10 days to get in touch with a clerk and then if it's a shareholder, we'll do a background check. That doesn't mean we go back out and reinvestigate the premises and we'll check the premises through again. These licenses are for a year, and each year they're renewed, and you have to come back in and go through the process each year. Um, then into um, the, for denial, or for revocation. If 
Um, you, you also have to have the same requirements that we do for anybody else. You're, you, you can't have indebtedness to the city. Right. You have to be in the proper zoning and those types of things. So um, if you owe taxes or tickets or anything else, that's, that's a reason to be denied a license. Um, once you receive your license, though, if the city attorney um, or the clerk believe that you're in violation, then you can you go through a revocation process, and that could be that um, you um, have not had um, you've not you've changed ownership and have not come to um, the city, or that um, there's been um, proof that you've been doing illegal operations on the facility. Those then come back through and the city attorney will meet with the um, city clerk and then they will decide about revocation of your license. If your license is taken away, you have the option then to go to circuit court as part of um, a redemption process and then um, go through that. The uh, One thing I did forget were the hours of operation um, are from 7 a.m. to 11 um, PM at night. Um, I will tell you on yeah. that also. There was a lot of discussion and a seven a.m. and a request no. to actually have it be say, twenty-four say hours. That you have twenty-four hour pharmacies. That you have the ability to get med. People are on third shift. They can get their medicine. And the committee said, no, we're not going to put twenty-four hours in, in this. So that may sound like a long period of time, but the opposite, polar opposite, was folks pushing for twenty-four hours being open. Okay. What this doesn't do is there are some ordinances out there that put a cap on how many um, places can be in a facility, in, in a um, area. Um, Grand, or, uh, Ann Arbor, for one, has it based on per capita of population, and they're only going to have 20 in Ann Arbor. Um, East Lansing, when they did their zoning, they put it in a specific area. They had one section of the city. It's an industrial park, and it's um, B4, and by the, the dimensions of the park and the dimensions of the buildings and um, the proximity of one to another, they're only going to have 8 to 10 in their location. Um, this does, you're not allowed to consume um, marijuana on premise except for educational purposes. Um, we tried wait, to get a... Wait, wait, because I just heard that. I knew that's what folks were going to ask. What does that mean? That means what if someone is coming in is the first time that they've ever been... And again, guys, I want to be fair here. This is not street weed. This is medical marijuana, and folks actually voted this in. You guys...